Jay here for Stretford Paddock, and this is Fanzine Friday, where we take a look at some of the Manchester United fanzines. And we're going to start this show, the first ever one, looking at one of the, the longest running Manchester United fanzines and speaking to the editor and founder of Red News, Barney Chilton. Barney, how's it going? All right, Jay, yeah. Hope everyone's all right. What a surreal period. I look like I'm in a hostage video, but I'm not. Yeah, are we, are we, are we appealing for help here? <laughs> yeah, God. I think we all need it. Um, but yeah, you just got to get through it, haven't you? So I hope everyone's all right watching this. Just sometimes life can throw the most surreal experiences at you. So, um, but uh, with regards to United, I was quite anti uh, a return. Um, just didn't think it was right, you know, when they were announcing so many deaths each day for them to be talking about football. But I reached a stage uh, for my own selfish mental health, really, where I just thought I need it. You know, I just hit a wall. So I surprised myself, really, how much I got into it, where I was saying, no, we're not there. It's not the same, which it isn't. And then suddenly, you know, the Spurs game, you're really into it. And then some of them, from the football at Brighton uh, to kicking chairs against West Ham, it, it, it surprised me. It's not the same. We need to get back. But my attitude has always been, you can't deprive footballers of their careers just because we're not there, you know. So United playing good football obviously helped that if we'd have been shit. <laughs> Can you imagine how bad this would have been? Um, but it's nice. It's it's really nice for us all to be smiling a bit about United. We've needed that. Gary Neville alluded to there's a calmness about United and people forget, you know, there was always a soap opera around Fergie with headlines, but there was periods where you'd go, they were quite boring. You know, you'd have two months where nothing happened. You'd just win. And there's nothing better in football to not have a swirl. So I'm delighted for Ollie that he's managed to get in a position where we're not talking about the same things. We're not being miserable all the time, you know? No, 100%. Um, what we'll do, we'll talk, I'll, we'll get into the season and Ollie Gunnar Solskjaer um, a little bit later on. And what I'll just if I can go a little bit back to to Red News and, and when it all started for you because you know I think everyone who's ever been to Old Trafford will have seen you stood on the corner there not far from Hotel Football there be long before Hotel Football was ever there um, just take us back to when, when he started was it was it 89 around the late, late 80s early 90s 87, 87, 87 87 forgive me, me. I was um, 16 yeah. very naive uh, there was a group of us who went and fanzines there were a couple who'd been around for a couple of years but it really started to kick in about 86 and we were going to all the games and we were just going United needs one there has to be one um we had a lot of concerns then some are still go ongoing now the way we were treated as fans uh, the way United was being run um and out of my group we all said we've got to do one but no one wanted to put the time and effort in so I stupidly put my hand up uh, my mum was quite um powerful in all this she, she was adamant we had to do it so helped along the way um and then we just started to sell it it took a while to get it going and then we played uh liverpool april 87 and we printed 50 and then they just went and it was like oh there is a, there is a demand and also a need for this so they, they were mad times you know you do, you were doing it on a shitty typewriter it's really hard sometimes i forget how hard it was a lecture set you know and there was quite um you you could uh you could be quite uh risk more risky that then than you could be now really there was a there was a there was more of an appetite for you know uh for testing things so you didn't know you you just didn't know if a page was going to work you didn't know if a page wasn't going to work and, and i actually sold the other end to where i was for years and years um, so it was really exciting. You know, I was at school, then I did my A-levels, if people can remember those. So, yeah, funny, really. Um, 1987, you know, on a typewriter, it must have been exciting but challenging as well. Yeah, there, there was, I mean, I was 16. So, as I said, the, the, we started, it started in the um, winter of 86, actually. We There was a, a postponed game at Aberdeen uh, where everyone said, we've got to get this fanzine off the ground. So, as I, I put my hand up, I was... It was just a very, very stupid, um, immature 16-year-old. And then things just took off. We sold 50 at the first game versus Liverpool. You were doing it on a shitty typewriter, a lecture set. And the, the, people know this, but Red News only came about because I only had basically the letters Red and News on an lecture set, which you had to pencil <laughs> in on a piece of paper. But there, were, there, was a, there was a right buzz about it, you know, like, 
pe- people would laugh. That's progress in technology. But you, you, you'd be you'd be tipax tipexing things out. I mean, th- there'll be about thirty Google things from this alone. What's electricity? What's what's tipex? You know, and you'd be taking these bits out. But there, there, it was a right buzz. You know, the, what a, it was a fantastic era, despite the challenges of being a football fan back then. And you you just did it all off the off the bat, really. You know. What are we going to have in this one? And there was a good group of people. Uh, Reddish who came from Red News. There was a few lads who were helping out with Red News at the start. Um, and they were great. You ask any one of us, you know, any one of us at that period, and you'd say that those are some of the best times we've had supporting United, even though we didn't win things. Then you sold 50. Then it became 100. And, you know, that, that period was unbelievable, really. And, and to, you know, it's just baffling. But I'm... The stubbornness are sometimes, you know, Red Issue's sadly fallen by the wayside. There's me and Andy left in terms of printed fanzines outside the ground and 1878's come up. But there's a stubbornness that you do it, that you keep doing it because you want to keep doing it. You know, and that's why we've done the campaign. If you're new to a fanzine, if you don't know what it's about, um, I think it's important that we have a visual reminder, Old Trafford, to the people who work there, the suits, the people like Ed Woodward, and also it represents something. This isn't a dig at your format because there's a need for immediacy, you know, and reaction after a game. But I think for a while I I was wondering where's the place of fanzine as technology advances. But I think it's more important than ever. And also you can respond to events afterwards. So you don't need to be, you know, you get you get the benefit of time. And sometimes that that's a good thing, you know. 100 percent. I mean, you you spoke then about, you know, obviously it's different format, but part of my match day, match day sort of experience has always been the fanzines. It's a, you know you read it before the game and at half time, and I think you know it's it's obviously different from what we do, but it it's it's both sort of sides of it are needed, and I think it, it's part of fan culture. And just tell us a little bit about the the campaign you mentioned there. You say there's a campaign. Tell us a little bit about that. Yes, obviously, you know, print is it, it's been written off. You know, print is dying, but it's hard. It, it, there's no denying it. <laughs> you know, everywhere you go. So the fanzine hit a period about three years ago where uh, th- there was a, we had a really bad winter, and I, and I was subbing the mag out of my pocket, and it just got to the point of we have to do something different. And to be fair, the Gooner had a campaign, the Arsenal fanzine, where they did something similar, and it gave me the idea that this way you get enough subs to carry on for the season ahead so i'm not worrying month by month can we carry on so the response is i, I mean I, I, people might laugh at this but i'm really humbled we're not we're just a small fanzine every there's parts of united you know there's no right or wrong way to do manchester united supporting we we should i always believe in a community you know what what our strengths are stronger than our divisions so, but for a small amount of Reds to sub for a year ahead with everything's going on, it means so much. So we can continue for a year. And I still think you're never short of things to say about Manchester United. This club is magnificent on so many levels. So we're always going to have something to say. So we've reached target this week. There's still time. It ends on Friday. If anyone listening wants to give the fans in a go, just try one of them. We're all different, um, but it's a varied mix of views. And the thing I passionately believe in, you're not always going to agree with the person next to you. It used to be that the red next to you, you might disagree with, but you'd have a pint at the end of it. That seems to have changed in the online universe. But the fans to represent views the way you look at it and you go, I don't like that. I don't agree with that. That's positive. This era of the world it isn't, you know, I disagree with that person strongly, but it shouldn't be that you fall out over it. Me and you could talk about United and we'll disagree about three or four players. That's quite healthy. A hundred percent. And obviously we'll put, um, you know, there's a link in the description as well so you can check out Red News and, and give a subscription as well. I mean, it goes without saying, Barney, you know, you talk about fa- founding this when you were 16, about having to sort of, you know, sort of keep it going on your own almost. I mean, this is a real labour of love for you. This isn't, you know, you're doing this because you love the club and you love what you do. Yeah, and it's it's hard to explain, you know, you can, it's better, it's be, you say we, you go you go out of this bubble of United that we have and I'm sure if you you were at a party and you explain what you do and you, the lengths we go to support United, people look at you, we've all had it and they go, he's fucking bonkers, you know. <laughs> I've done this for my, my family since I was four years of age. You can't 
there's it's, it, there's a, there's an irrationality about being a football supporter. <laughs> the, the the things we do in support of this club, but equally, it's Old Trafford is home. My mates are united. You know, it's the, it, it, the, it goes back to that point about the strength is bigger than divisions. This is the most fantastic club to support, even with all the shit that goes with it. It's and I think I think you know we've all said that during this lockdown, um, it's made you reevaluate things, and of course it has. Life can go on without football. We all know that, but the United coming back has, has really emphasised. Life is great when it's when United are in your life as well. No, I know what you mean. I like what you were saying earlier about when the sort of the season restarted without the fans. I was very sceptical, but you know we have missed football. Once once the, the team kicks off against Spurs, you get that buzz again, don't you? And it's just you know just can't wait for the fans. To... Here's something for you to. to I I obviously I'm desperate to go back, and that's not from a fanzine point of view. I just want to see everyone, but we're clearly not going to be back for a very long period of time, all of us. So my, I've put, I said we'd do a podcast that if we are going to have 15%, then is there an argument that one or 2% of that 15% is 10 to 20 year olds? Because they're the lifeblood, you know, my age, no one's going to agree with this, but we've seen it all. So I, I, I don't think you can afford to miss a year or two years out of a kid's life support in United. And as I say, I'm critical on United on many levels, but on how they do this, I'm not, it's going to be, people are going to be upset, however it is. And it's not going to be the same. We, how can you, how, you know, it's just a head fuck. I know, I know what you mean. And, it, you know, you sort of take it for granted how easy many of us, or easier we had it, you know. Yeah. Um, but I mean, just there's, going... there's people, the, the, my saddest part and is that there's going to be, when we do all get back finally, there's going to be a lot of Reds who are no longer with us. And that that's that's a brutal reminder of, you know, where we are and how important this really is. No, it is. You know, it's been a, such a testing time, such a sad time for a lot of people. Um, and like you say, it looks like it's going to be a, quite a wait until we can get back to normal, whatever that may be. Um, going back to, to the sort of, obviously, talking about 33 years you've been doing this, Barney. I had hair. You, none of this, none of you arguing about haircuts and all that on the internet during lockdown. Mate, look, look, listen, you, you, I'm not, I'm not in a position to criticise anyone's hair. Um, <laughs> well, over those 33 years, you've obviously done a lot of interviews. You've been to countless games. What's been the highlight of you for you, or the highlights doing the mag over those years? The Magwise, you know, on the pitch, 99 will never be surpassed. But I always say United make memories every season, good or bad. Um, I don't know. There's a few meeting George Best. We never interviewed him because it wasn't it was never the right moment. It, it, it was always. But we met him a few times. And he, it, that to someone that so still to this day, so many people um, we've interviewed greats, Dennis Law, you know, Norman Whiteside, Paddy Crayer and uh, Fergie in the early days and um, in the very early days when he was quite open and forthright, then it, then obviously they became the bigger United got, they became a barrier. But going back to those early days, we, we got a two page letter from Alex Ferguson in um, 1989 telling us how he thought fanzine should be at Old Trafford. And that sort of <laughs> is how, you know, you'd never get that now. But he wrote a two page letter to me which I've never printed, can't, won't print, but how he thought Red News should be, what he thought it was, he, you know, he said, you, my place is to defend the players, so anyone knocking them, it, it affects that. But you think, <laughs> Jesus, did that really happen? You know, so th th there was obviously this, the, when the fanzines were on the ascendancy, the whole the whole world was paying attention in that late 80s period. But I think, um, personally, I interviewed Nemanja Vidic, um, and that the club stopped us interviewing because of the content about the Glazers. But he was so nice, so open. That's one of my highlights, I think. I mean, that's great when you talk about those. And you can't imagine that, like getting a two page letter off Fergie saying, Yeah, <laughs> this is how this is what you should be doing. We used to have dialogue, you know, you'd, you'd meet him because that was United then on pre season tours. We used to do the Scandinavian pre season tours. There was no security, it was just. Yeah. There were 30 or 40 Reds, the part, obviously a lot of local supporters, but you'd just walk into the team hotel and Fergie would be there, all right, lads, how you doing? And then there's the football, you know, that period of 1989, he wasn't happy with the content, obviously. 
uh, little did we know, little did we know, given time and everything would turn out great, you know? Well, it must have been, I was just going to get to that, because, you know, you started it in 1987, obviously you've got a new manager in Fergie, and then we have these sort of these two or three years where he's he's trying to stamp his mark on the club and things aren't going great. That must have been sort of fascinating to be starting a magazine around that time as well. Fancy yeah, I mean, there time. was so much. That's when United started being, we were always a bit of a soap opera under Atkinson, you know, headlines. Started, it started changing football headlines. You were front page, you know, some players on the piss, some players having affairs, but it really took off then. And the football was terrible in those early years. But I, I, I've said this many times. If Fergie wrote a book, A Year in the North, about his time at Aberdeen. If I, I wish I'd read that in 87, because it was the blueprint for everything he did at United. And you forget, it's not like, you know, Fergie had achieved great things. And I think we, pre, pre everything that the world now is, we sort of hadn't taken that into consideration. And with, with hindsight, it, it, he he was all. I think he was destined to do what he did. He obviously had. There was significant moments of luck, good fortune, genius along the way. And we, you know, we'd taken Norman Paul McGrath leaving. We took that to heart. We were gutted as a fan base. And you know, it, it was sort of like um, the two thousand. Sorry, nineteen ninety five with Hughes, Konchelskis. But this was like a dagger blow. What what's this man doing? Say so little did we know. You know, that's why you should never, maybe David Moyes apart, never write off a football man manager at Manchester United. No, I agree with that. Definitely, yeah, especially <laughs> the David Moyes bit. Um... God, don't. <laughs> that was a grim, dear, oh dear. So that's why it's finally good to be thinking with, you know, we don't know what if Ollie's going to succeed or not, but it's, it's nice to have a bit of momentum at long last and to finish a season on a bit of a high. You know, I know we did after Stockholm and we, I thought we would be going places after there. But it feels to, to have a manager you care about. You know, I know there's, there were the Oli in and out debates, but everyone fundamentally cares and wants, wills Oli to succeed. So I was delighted for him to, to get an opportunity. Let's see what the next year brings, you know, whenever the year is actually going to happen. Yeah, I'm just, just going to get to that. Um... Barney, how do you feel about this season? How do you sum it up? Because, it, I mean, you know, getting Champions League football and finishing third is obviously fantastic. But, you know, if I'm going to be a little bit cynical, we are still a, a long way off top. And it, it hurts the fact, obviously, that the Scousers have won it. What do you think of the job that Ollie's doing and how positive do you feel towards going into next season? Well, I'd have never thought, you know, there were moments where right kicking the bollocks, Bournemouth away, City that first half in the League Cup home game. And one player has has galvanised this squad. But after Burnley, you know, we'd have never thought we'd be in this position. And it, my thing was, uh, have we improved? Now, points total, we haven't improved. But we can all see, especially during the lockdown period, have we improved as a football team? Yes. And you don't go fifth to first in this era. So you build things. You know, the Champions League, I'm never going to celebrate, well, we're in the Champions League. But you needed to get to it this summer for a number of reasons. Now, I'm doubtful whether the Glazers will fully turn up to the party, but Oli has put them in a position where we need to. And for the whole team, for the momentum we were building, Champions League was vital. So, yes, you, you've finally got the seeds of hope that maybe we can see where we get to. Now, we're all going to argue, do we need a centre-back? I think we do. Do we need a, a, another full-back? Possibly. Do we need a winger? Yes. Do we need another midfielder? Possibly. So this is, Ollie put it to the board, you know, he's done his bits, it's over to Woodward to do his. But I finally think, I don't know, you know, you're always caught out as a football fan, but it was just nice to have a period, especially right now, where we're not, we're not worrying about the future, we're looking forward to it. 100%, definitely. Do you think, sort of, you know, you mentioned the time under Fergie and the, those sort of two and a half, three years, whatever it was, when we didn't win anything and times were tough. Do you think Ollie will get the time he needs? Because you can see the progress, but, you know, football has changed and you almost feel that it's it's not season by season anymore. It's almost month by month with a lot of managers and we know that the owners are a bit trigger happy at times. Do you think he'll get the time he needs to, to make it a success? Um, it's tough because I think Ed always has eyed Pochettino um, and I think if the season had continued on a downward spiral, he would have probably gone. Um, I think he needs another year. You know, whatever happens, I think he needs another year. We need to get away from this. We're a club who's just 
hiring and firing because you could see when it was going wrong under Ollie, he was making mistakes. You know, we'll all, we could all see that. But also, that was four managers team and that's not good enough for anyone you know you cannot you cannot work under that environment so I'd like to think so but you just don't know but what what it did give him the opportunity is as you say it's not month by month anymore Ollie knew about well he knew as soon as we got foot but he knew he's there in September and October and even that breathing space he hasn't been afforded for much of the season so let's see what he can do. And hopefully, you know, there's doubts over the coaching staff. You'd like them to, to um, be more maybe vocal on the touchline, changing things during games. But he's learning on the job. And I know he had experience as a manager before this. But it's like a footballer. They, they do not realise the size, the pressure, the scope of United until you're managing it. And you ask Ollie, and every interview's come across really well. He is learning on this job with young coaches, you know, apart from feeling around him. So let's give it a go. What have we got to lose? You know, this has been dreadful enough this last six years. We've tried Jose. We tried Van Gaal and it wasn't working. So I'm personally, you know, I, there were, I'm, everyone had worries. We had major bumps this season. But to end it, to think the season doesn't have that much of a turnaround and we're all looking forward in whatever way it is to September is a good thing. Do you feel, I mean, long answers. You've seen... sorry, Jay, always long answers. <laughs> no, no, don't apologise. Um, you've obviously seen, you know, the ups and downs and quite a few managers. Do you, do you feel that there is that sort of positivity around the club now? Do you feel that you don't get carried away? But what's no, going and on? I think an age thing, like when we're talking about the fanzine, the 16 year old me would recoil at the age I am now with some of the things I do in life and some of the things I do at United, you know, quite normal and boring. The, the me now who's approaching 50 would go to the 16-year-old, take your time. Not everything is in a rush. So I think the age you are and what you've seen as a football fan affects, you know, the way you look at, look at United. But the players looked happy. The players look more confident. There are issues, David De Gea. But, you know, 14 games unbeaten, you look at that table after 24. It's not a pass because we had... The first stage of Ollie was like this. He's quite. He's been quite a paradox. You go on great runs and then you go on dreadful, dreadful runs of results that are defeats and that. So the key is, do we start the season well? And the Europa being a, a free hint, hit now might be the bonus that he needs. Get a bit of silverware. I know, obviously, we haven't got um, fans at the ground and we've not had that for a little while, but... Before lockdown, what did you make in the atmosphere at Old Trafford? Do you think it changed a little bit? Because I don't know. Yeah, I mean, no, I, I, my I, I, point, but it just it seems to be a lot the better for, well, yeah, for well, one of I think TRA seemed, the atmosphere been, seems seems to improve quite a lot this season. I think TRA have been fantastic for a period when the football was dull. They were the single best arrival and influence over the course of the last season, w w giving it a go, non-stop noise. I thought they were fantastic. You know, Rick's been doing great things with it. So you could tell it, and it sort of galvanises if one end gets going, then the other. My argument has always been, I'd, and this has long, you know, been argued, the pages of the fanzine for years and years have been debating our atmosphere, but I'd have the exec bit moved in the middle of the Stretford end and give the whole of the Stretford end, not one area, and then see if we can bounce off. But I never thought in my lifetime I'd see safe stand in return. So it's just to have that opportunity for youngsters at United is a fantastic, as, as probably as good a result as we've had on the pitch. I'm absolutely delighted about that. No, me too. I remember going um, standing when I was a kid and it's something that I'm, I'm missing. I mean, I'm, you know, getting on a bit now, but for, for young fans, like you were saying, it, it's something they've not seen. So it'll be great for them to experience it when we, uh, when we do eventually get there, of course, because... You pass the baton on as a United fan. You know, for the average age of season ticket holder has been 54. That's been ridiculous. We've got to get that down. We've got to address. And United and Rick are trying to work on that. So that's good. You, you pass it on because there's so many influences. Anyone who's got a kid these days knows they haven't. They, it's harder to get a ticket. There's so many obstacles about getting into a football ground. They've got so many diversions, you know. They've got things going on that we never had when we were like, I've got to get to United. So United need to get them in. And also, you pass the baton on. So you say, I was 16, you know, where you need another next set of generation of Reds coming who are vocal, who want to do things, who want to have an impact.
Definitely. Um, just before you go, Banner, we've we've been having a bit of a debate for player of the year. Um, who's been your player of the season this season for Manchester United? The biggest impact is Fernandez. you know, for what he's done for the club. But you, can you give it to someone who's only been here half a season? I'm going to be controversial. I'm not being contrary. I think Harry Maguire's had a good season and I think he's lifted us. He, he might need another partner. That's, that's a debate for another day. But I think Maguire, wan has been consistent. He needs areas to work on his game. But isn't it nice? We, we keep saying, we're, it, all cast your minds back to how we felt after Cardiff last May. That we didn't have, you know, we a player of the seasons, we'd have gone far, you know. So to oh, no. have an ability where we've got four or five in the mix is a great thing. So onwards and upwards and keep the faith, as, as so many Reds have told me over the years. Keep the faith, everyone. Let's see where we're going. And just for, finally, um, obviously, we're going to put a link in in the description where people can check out Red News. Just tell uh, for anyone who's not too sure or doesn't know a lot about the fans and what sort of things you can check out there. That, it's that a very the mix. It can be coarse, as a reader put it. That's coarse as in C-O-A-R-S-E. <laughs> it can be rude. It's there to challenge. It's there to provoke. It's also meant to prod the powers to be to do better at the club. You might not like some of it. Hopefully you will. And it's an alternative view on Manchester United. And I don't know how long we'll keep going, but thanks to everyone who supports it. And give it a go. You've got nothing to lose. Cheers, lads. Cheers, Barry. Thanks for joining us. Cheers, thanks, mate. Jay. And take care, yeah? So that was Barney from Red News. This has been Fanzine Friday. Don't forget to check out the link in the description where you can subscribe to Red News. Don't forget to give us a like and share as well and subscribe to Stretford Paddock where we'll have loads of good videos coming up. Thanks for watching.